Moji was one. Moji was once the most beloved figure in Toronto, from creating what many refer to Yo, can y'all hear me now? Fuck. I bet. You're my fault, bro. I never... I haven't been... Hold up. I haven't been streaming on this channel in a long time, so I had to... um put my mic to stream on a certain um, audio track because I only use this profile to do my recordings and shit. South Jamaica, baby, they made me to be the greatest. Ooh, that shit fire, right? So what I was saying before, yeah, because when I'm, when I'm like, I, I have OBS to record and stream, right? So I have a different profile to do my streams when I'm on my other channels and Twitch. but 
the profile I use to actually do my recordings for my regular channel, I don't have it set up for streaming. I don't got the streaming setting, so that's why we was muted. So I was saying earlier, I, I want to stream more consistently on this channel. I just got to figure out the right time. Maybe we could do that shit Fridays before I got to go to work and we could do like random videos like this, like the, you know, the little documentary shit. We could do some scary shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll try to set it up for like a Friday. You know, only thing we won't stream is like music because YouTube be blocking shit. But I can do like some personalized streams on Twitch for music and shit like that too. But yeah, what's up, y'all? Appreciate the love, man. Appreciate all the support. What's good, Brody? Much love, man. Shout out to everybody from Toronto. Love y'all, man. Y'all always support, man. So yeah, we about to check this uh, documentary out, Tales of Toronto, The Rise and Fall of Moji. A lot of y'all was asking me to check this one out. Um, This is going to be a good one. It's an hour long. So I said, you know what? Let's do something different. Let's do a live stream. You know what I'm saying? So again, I'm trying to figure out maybe Fridays, every Friday, we could do like a live stream on the channel and, you know, do like random reactions, do like these type of reactions, like documentaries and shit like that. And if I do stream on Twitch, then, you know, we could do some music shit. But I'm going to be doing some music reactions tomorrow and Monday. So start letting me know some requests that y'all want to see for Monday. Yo, that diss is overrated, bro. Yo, that diss was so overrated, bro. Like, everybody be overhyping shit, bro. He only had one good line. He said that Prince live, outlived Mike Jack. You get what I'm saying? That's the only line I thought was fire. I'm like, ooh, that's a hard line, but... Yo, I'm not a Kendrick fan, bro. Ever since he did that control and he talking about he was the king of New York, fuck out of here, bro. Now, I'm not going to say he's a bad rapper. I'm not going to act like he, he has some songs I do like, but he's not fucking with Drake or Cole, bro. Let's be real. Like, people were just overhyping that diss like it was some crazy shit. Like, get out of here with that bullshit. All right, so we got a couple people in here. Let me know when y'all want me to start this show. I, I want to wait for a few more people, but at the end of the day, I know people will come and watch the video after the fact and shit. But yeah, man, like everybody's saying Future is beefing with Drake because um, Drake did that joint album with 21 and shit, but I don't know, man. I saw that Nav unfollowed Drake. Like, Nav, what is you doing, bro? You're really a peon in the industry, bro. Like, you think unfollowing Drake is going to hurt Drake? Like, and listen, I fuck with Drake musically over Kendrick. I fuck with Drake musically over J. Cole. You know I'm saying? I used to really rock with the boy. You know, lately, I wasn't feeling the new Drake. I wasn't feeling the painting the nails. And, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't liking how he was moving and shit. Because I know people would say, oh, you just hate on Drake, right? When I did that on the radar freestyle, you know what I'm saying? People say, oh, you just a hater of Drake. Nah, bro. Like, I actually fuck with Drake's music a lot. I like Drake's music a lot, he is, but you can like somebody's music and not like them as a person. You get what I'm saying? But I'm on Drake's side with this whole beef, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, we about to hop right into this shit. We're going to check this joint out. Yeah, like Nav is like, bro, you just want attention. Like, why are you even choosing sides? You get what I'm saying? Yo, what's good, brody? Anyway, man, let's start this shit up. Yeah, he should he should be on Drake's side. Is uh who who found Nav? Was Nav found by uh Future or Metro or some shit? Cause I'm trying to figure out why Nav is choosing sides and shit. Why he's unfollowing Drake? He must have did music with uh, Metro Boomin or some shit. All I know Nav is for that one song. I'm gonna be honest with you, like. But yeah, man, let's hop right into this shit. Let's check this joint now. Oh, he was found by the weekend. Copy to as the unofficial Aye. anthem for the streets of the six to working with the likes of drake at just 18 years old he was destined for greatness he had they the had a collab album copy and the connections but no more than five years after entering the scene he self-destructed on today's episode of tales of toronto we're gonna take a closer look at moji's meteoric rise to stardom and analyze what caused the downward spiral of his once promising career so because his man's back. All we got to analyze is that his man's backdoored him, right? 
Didn't they backdoor Moji or some shit like that for Drake or some foul shit? Relax and enjoy the video. Drake stole uh, stole yo, boys' what? dance. What happened to Moji? <laughs> I heard about him. Is Moji a real like? Is he really tapped in? I like Moji. Yeah. Have you ever ever heard in the history of hip hop a man that gives away his creativity and helps make Billboard hits but doesn't get nobody bumps Nav anyway? Facts. After calling out Drake last week, Moji posted a picture suggesting he was the target of a violent assault at the hands. Damn! They did that boy dirty. Now Drake is a snake though. He be sliming his man's fucking his man's girls and shit. He done did that to a couple people in the industry. That's why a lot of people hate on him. He did it to DJ Drama. He did it to a couple people. Mohammed Badan. Better Drake don't have no limits when it comes Moji. to females, bro. He feel like he could the downtown fuck Toronto any girl he want. And he really Park. could, but when he was two, his parents relocated him and his eight siblings from Jane and Finch to here, the south side of Toronto's first <laughs> and largest OVO Canadian sweatshop. housing project. Facts. He grew up on Sutton Avenue, which was once predominantly Somali and working class. I know he got like the Ghost parents. Riders working Locked overtime for Kendrick. This because it's been home to several <laughs> hit movies, TV shows, and even award-winning musicians. Despite its rich history, Regent Park's reputation was tarnished when escalating gun violence reached its peak in 1995. To combat the issue, Toronto Police's 51 Division would conduct numerous raids in the area, but this only made things worse. Residents began calling out 51 Division officers for being the aggressors during their many enforcement blitzes, and by- Nav never helped anyway. Lanes gave Pressa two verses, Houdini a ver- I mean- I'm gonna keep it a stack with you. Like getting a verse from Nav wouldn't really even matter, bro. It's not really gonna do nothing for nobody. You get what I'm saying? By August of 19. Elaine's verse is way Did better than getting a Nav point, verse, in my opinion. Of residents and police officers clashed in what is now known as the riot in Regent Park. The chaos didn't stop there, mm. as a number of local street gangs were formed to deter the police from re-entering the neighborhood, and according to some residents, it worked. Unfortunately, as the- I ain't gonna lie, it feels good to be reacting to some Toronto shit, bruh. <laughs> Wait a minute, I gotta tap back in with y'all, man. Tap back into the music and shit. You know what I'm saying? I've been, you know, not that I'm going in a different direction, but I've been having fun just reacting to a lot of different things. You know, we got the- the Sopranos reactions, you know, we're doing some anime. And I'm going to be honest, the views don't always be, you know, looking good. But sometimes it's not even about that. It's actually doing something that you enjoy doing. doing. You know what I'm saying? And I enjoy doing that. The Toronto shit, random shit, you know, but we're going to get back into the music shit too. The years I got to be more consistent. We almost at 40K, bro. And Regent Park residents only got thicker. In fact, this was one of the few reasons Mo G dropped out of school at just 10 years old. And they're scared. You ever seen when uh, when they bring a cop to a classroom when you're a little kid and, and then yeah. the cops just in the classroom yeah. looking at us like, yo, I'm going to pack when you guys grow up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what happened to me at school. That's why I dropped out of school when I was 10 years old. You see when I said I dropped out when I was in grade four, this really happened. Mm -hmm. Mentally, I left school at the mm -hmm. age of 10. You know why? Because Man. they brought feds to the school. Violation. You know what I'm saying? Super violation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? And this is, this so is, guess what I did? I this just is left a the whole classroom. Mm -hmm. I went to the mosque right across the street. I never came back to school ever again. Okay, you see what you're saying right now? <laughs> I never came back you to school. Right now? <laughs> Except for a two-week stint at the exhibition place, Mo G has never worked for anyone but himself. Rather, as his oldest friend Jabril puts it, Mo was in Regent Park with his friends, getting that street education. Street education and all that comes with it, rapping in basements, hustling in the streets, has occupied the majority of Mo G's life. That same street education also helped catapult him into stardom before he even turned 18. Yo, who y'all thought was a better rapper, Mo G or Smoke Dog? Rest in peace, Smoke Dog, too, by the way. Smoke Dog easily. During his teen years, Mo G spent a significant portion of the early part of the day alone at home either asleep. But who was more influential? Was Mo G more influential or Smoke Dog was more influential? Sleep or lounging. Because let's keep it real, Drake took that dance from Mo G. You know what I'm saying? That kind of like brought eyes and attention to smoke dog and shit it brought attention to his whole crew so if it wasn't for that would drake had even you know known who smoke dog was his nights however were a different story 
There were long spontaneous excursion filled nights that start at one place like a Raba and end up in another like a studio. Still posted it's by the Raba. That eight years mm -hmm. ago, Moji was born through his best known song, Still by the Raba. An unofficial anthem for the streets of Toronto, the song speaks of moving product and the Raba, among other things. When explaining how the hit record came about, Moji says he went home and told. Yo, how much you want to bet the next documentary is going to be Joe Easy, bro? I, I bet you, I bet anybody, any amount of money that the next documentary this guy's going to do is going to be about uh, Joe Easy, bro. That his brother to crash turn dummy on his phone and record him freestyling i was Loaded wild cash and excited he then went to his friend's house and roasted all he didn't take rap serious one. as moji remembers it i gave everyone a hot 16 making fun of them later that night he would go on to write <laughs> still by the robo with his childhood friend Smoke it, it's not funny because it's actually really sad bro like it's it's really sad that that whole situation bro you know what i'm saying like People were saying drugs, drug. Yo, bro, it's not just drugs, bro. It's some spiritual, spiritual shit behind that. I really, fully believe it was some spiritual. Yo, for somebody to do what he did, ran down his brother. You know what I'm saying? Shoot your mom, kill your dad and your bro. Yo, bro. And then people were saying he had something to do with the guy at the bus stop. I don't know, bro. It's more than just drugs and. I think it's some spiritual shit behind that. He did a Chris Benoit, yeah. Oh, dog. Using an instrumental he found on YouTube and the bars <laughs> he freestyled earlier that day. Fast forward to October this world 4th, is crazy, 2014. Right? The music video was recorded and uploaded on YouTube. Damn, 2014? 100,000 views before Moji That's took wild. it down out of respect for his best friend Ano, who died just two days after the video was released. In an interview with MTV News back in 2016, Moji explained the reason behind taking the video down. He's mm. smoking and drinking in the video. I'm a spiritual guy, you know, I don't like his family seeing that. I was holding Camry in my hand, and if I die, I don't want people seeing that. You know what I'm saying? That stuff is gonna burn me in hell. <sighs> it's funny, he say some shit like that. He's spiritual and yada yada yada. But isn't doing music haram, if I'm not mistaken? You're rapping about selling drugs, shooting people, doing all that's haram, right? So what's the difference? Police are called to Shooter Street near Parliament on exactly. October 6, 2014 for the sound of gunshots. 18-year-old Yusuf Ali was taken to hospital with multiple gunshot wounds where he later died. The suspect, who was wearing all black with a hoodie, was last Even as a Christian, we're not even supposed to be listening to certain so shit. I'm going to be honest with you. An update for us. Like, we shouldn't be watching certain things and listening to certain things, but it's kind of hard, bro. Like, I grew up loving music. I grew up, you know what I'm saying? Like, Ali, often referred to into as this Anno shit. by loved ones, was described by those same people as a peacemaker and a community leader. In Plus, it'd be boring sometimes. What we going to do all day? <laughs> people knew him, and he was kind, no matter who you were. Before entering high school, Ano had been captain of multiple sports teams and even won an Athlete of the Year award. But as Man. he entered grade 9 at Jarvis Collegiate, it became harder for him to stay focused. Soon, he began skipping. That's the typical hood story. You be having them athletes that they win awards and they good at sports and all this shit, but then they get a taste of the street life and the peer pressure, bro, which is sad, bro. If you guys, if you guys got friends, right, like if you're in the street and you got friends that can actually play sports right i had a, a one of my close friends he died he fell off the roof and some shit but his name was d block and he was one of the best high school like football players bro his favorite football player was champ bailey he modeled the way champ like his the way he played the way champ bailey played and he was in love with the streets too you know what i'm saying he was blood and it was like you know if you a real one, man, push your friends that's into the... Thank you. Push your friends that's into sports to stay into sports, bro. Lead the street shit to the street dudes. Like, everybody don't gotta... You know what I'm saying? Like, a real one would be like, nah, bro, just focus on that. You know, you are mans. You know what I'm saying? We got you. We gonna protect you, hold you down. But you ain't gotta get yourself involved with none of this street shit. Just play sports, bro. ...in school nearly every day with his best friend, Moji, and was completely caught up in the negatives of Regent Park. During the early 2000s, hustling in the streets of Thank you, Toronto Park came with a price. As previously mentioned, the block was plagued by senseless gun violence. Listen to jazz? Nah, know, that ain't that me. <laughs> a lot of it arose from internal gang disputes. 
As the violence escalated throughout the 2010s, it gained coverage by a number of Canadian media outlets, with one going as far as describing the situation as a quote-unquote internal cleansing. Now this is not to say Anno's situation had anything to do with the internal gang disputes within his community, but based off the details provided by Toronto police, it's a theory worth considering. So let's take a closer look at Anno's case. Dependability, reliability, confidence, everything you want in a sedan, backed by a tank. On October 6th, 2014, 18-year-old Anno was walking with two of his friends in an alleyway near Queen and... Bro, where does this guy get all this footage from, bro? Son, I be, like, wondering, these channels that be making these documentary-style videos, bro? Like, I even thought about, like, yeah, I should do some shit like that, right? Because, you know, them just get views and shit, but... That's a lot of work and researching. Like, I'm good, fam. But this guy got fucking police footage. He got dates and times. He probably got witnesses. Like, what the fuck, bro? Parliament Street <laughs> he has to be a cop, bro. PM when he was shot in the back multiple times Facts. by a lone gunman. Toronto police quickly obtained surveillance footage in the surrounding area. And like, how do you know where to even get this footage from? Like, you just Google it or some shit? Like, how is this even available? To a regular person. What they managed to find shocked them. First, cameras caught the lone gunman following Anno through several different laneways for at least five minutes in a very determined fashion Man. before opening fire. In addition to this, the two Officer Vlad. who witnessed the entire incident unfold were <laughs> left unharmed, suggesting Anno was the intended target of the brazen daylight assassination. Man. After further daylight? investigation, the firearm used in the killing was found to be linked to one other offense that occurred in a different part of the city, but that still wasn't enough information to link officers to a suspect. The city's chief of police at the time, Mark Saunders, <laughs> placed a $50,000 reward for any information. Yo, shout the out killing. to Australia. To this day, Anno's murder is still unsolved. Wait a minute, so they never found the dude that did this shit, bro? <sighs> That's crazy. And, it, and you know what's crazy? Dudes that be getting away with shit like this, I wonder how many other bodies they got. Like, how many other times he got away with doing some shit like this? During his 2016 interview, they got me feeling like I'm OG academics. Yo, I ain't gonna hold you. I was at work watching that stream Ac academics did, bro. I ain't gonna lie. That shit was legendary. Yo, academics is hilarious, bro. I don't care what nobody says, bro. I'm about, I'm about to start reacting to some of his little clips. I got to, because he be having me crying, bro. The incident impacted him. Especially with the whole Meek Mill shit. He had to take out Anno's braids to prep him for his wake. And while doing so, he'd seen the bullet when holes he's drunk? in the back of his head. It was Anno who Moji skipped school with every day. It mm. was Anno who was bumping still by the rabba everywhere he went. And Yo, shout out to all my Albanians, man. Especially from Australia. Yeah, I need me some Albanian chicks, bro. You know what I'm saying? There's a couple baddie Albanian joints around here before I wanted to smash. You know what I'm saying? I had me Armenians. One of my ex was Armenian, but I ain't never had an Albanian. It was Anno who told Moji to pursue his dream of rapping. And they be Maybe mad hood too. After Anno's untimely passing, still was re-uploaded by a fan. This time, it didn't take off right away, because the scene was now dominated by a new rap collective <laughs> based out of the backyard of Regent Park, otherwise known as the Esplanade. Forever. The Prime Boys is an Esplanade raised rap group consisting of three members Donnie, Jay Wiss, and Jimmy. Why Prime. he left the group, Most bro? recognized Jimmy is the one who coined the now widely used term, the Six, as a nickname for Toronto. It is in reference to the city's six boroughs and area codes 416 and. Damn, Drake even stole the Six from this dude, bro. Yo, Jake, Drake be stealing from everybody. <laughs> Yo. He stole the six from homie? That's crazy. He said he became a priest? Damn. So wait a minute. The Prime Boys were from Regent too? I ain't catch that. This is Scar. Yo, Scarborough's fucking big. No ditty. North York. Okay. 647. The term was created while Jimmy was brainstorming <laughs> with Drake's manager, Oliver L. Cadib. The two knew each other no since diddy, 2014 gang. and would often collaborate on projects together. One of them was Jimmy Prime's single, Northside. 
On the set of the music video, Oliver was there providing creative assistance. There too was Safe Muzad, better known by his stage name, Safe. Safe is also an Esplanade native who at the time was just- You know what's crazy? You know what this makes me think, right? Imagine if Drake would have actually put his city on properly. The Toronto music scene would be in such a better spot right now. You get what I'm saying? Because there's no denying that there's talented artists over there. There is talented art. Dude, this is bare talented artists over there, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no reason why this sh it should be hard for dudes coming from Toronto to make it. You know, if he would have took dudes like these guys under his wing, I mean, he tried to, you know, put Smoke Dog under his wing and Smoke Dog died. Who knows? Smoke Dog could have probably been the one, Houdini. But I still feel like Drake could have did more for the city, man. Trump 2024, facts. Just an aspiring artist posting his tunes on SoundCloud. Oliver would invite him to attend the opening of OVO's Toronto pop-up store, where he was asked if he wanted to work steadily at the newly opened boutique. And as expected, Safe pounced at the opportunity. As he spent more time around the shop, his relationship with Oliver continued to strengthen. This is when he took the chance to introduce Oliver to not only his own music, but his friend Mo G's as well. Oliver seemed to like Still by the Rabba so much he sent the track to Drake, and soon after, all of the pieces needed to become a star came together naturally for Moji. Mm. March 25th, 2015. The rise of Moji begins here after Drake posted a clip of Still to his Instagram. That's crazy. 2014 was 10 years ago. You know how time, how, how fast time be flying, bro? Like, I was thinking, like, when he said 2014 in the beginning, I was thinking of, like, Chief Keef. When Chief, but Chief Keef came out 2012, right, if I'm not mistaken, around that time. But damn, 2014, yo, that shit was just like yesterday. Graham, captioning it, Ginobili dance all summer. Although the music video... It happens in New York, too, bro. Time, it was re-uploaded again... In New York, dudes is always beefing. ...2015, and it still managed to earn impressive numbers. Three days later, Smoke Dog released his hit single, Trap House. That same day, Drake's highly publicized beef with Philadelphia-based rapper Meek Mill would reach its peak after Freak Mill. Back to Back, a diss track that sent the hip-hop world in a frenzy. Fast forward a month, Drake's highly controversial music video for his hit single, Energy, was released. As he's sending subliminal shots left, right, and center, Drake can also be seen doing a rather unique dance. One Moji had in you, you know what's funny about um that album? What album was that? What's it? If it was written, what, what album? Was, what's the name of that album? With energy. If you're reading this, is too late, right? That album, I ain't gonna lie. That album was one of my favorite Drake albums. That album was fire to me. That was one of his best albums, like really rapping. Like he was, it was some singing shit on there, but he was really on his rap shit on that album. But I think it got overshadowed because that's when we found out Boy was working with um that Miller kid when he had the Ghostwriter and shit. Feel me? Now I felt like after we found out that he had a Ghostwriter, it ruined the album for me. Like I couldn't, I didn't want to hear it no more. That album was one of my favorite, bro. I was bumping that shit. I had the album like. When you still brought CD, when people were still buying CDs, I brought the CD, the CD bro. You feel me? Because I'm a real fan. If I like people's music, I buy the albums. I'm not like these fucking fake ass youths that be streaming shit and they act like they streaming numbers matter. No. Real fans are going to buy your music. And I, I was buying shit. You know what I'm saying? I brought the Weekends album too. When the Weekends shit came out 2015. CDs. Innovated. Called the Ginobili. If the dance seems familiar, it's because Take it's Care is my favorite though. To me, that was actually a classic. Box. Take Care. Drake would later reference the Ginobili in his hit song, Jumpman, featuring Future. Hey, this album slapped too, right here. That track would later be released on their collaborative mixtape, What, what a, a Time, time to, to Be Alive, which is now quadruple platinum. Within a year of entering the rap game, Mo yeah, which one was better, 21 and Drake album or Future and Drake? I'm going to be honest, I only heard like a couple songs off the 21 and Drake shit. But this Future shit to me, I used to stay bumping this G shit. He had officially been co-signed by the biggest rapper in the world. 
This was huge, not just for him, but for Toronto's music scene as a whole. The consistent support from the boy shined a light on a scene that was waiting for the perfect moment to Future erupt, and, Drake for and sure. that, it did. Are you still using that old loop or wasp off? If so, you don't want to miss out. Hey yo, nobody want to see dude washing his chest? No diddy. You're listening to Mobio Sound Radio on Sound 42. Broadcasting live from Toronto, Canada. Throughout the remainder of 2015, Moji, Smoke Dog, and Safe would have earned significant airtime on Drake's radio station, OVO Sound Radio. The three friends would then join forces to form their own rap collective called Halal Gang, alongside their two other musically inclined friends, Puffy Ells and Mustafa I never knew Pope. Safe was a part Fast of Halal Gang. December, Safe was hosting his debut album release party at the iconic entertainment venue, Mod Club, and would bring the gang with him. The since-closed establishment had a reputation for hosting artists before their rise to stardom, and on December 13th, 2015, that reputation remained true. The OVO-sponsored event featured a star-studded lineup, from Prime Boys to Ram Riddles. Nearly every artist at the event were at the peak of their careers, which made for one hell of a show. To close That's crazy. Historic fashion, safe so to wait a minute, they all was at that show, including The weekend. Damn. Decided to have the song of the year. That would have been a lit show to be at. For the very first time. Hey. Moji completely shined that night. As he ginobly across the stage, his energy was mm -hmm. infectious, spreading throughout the crowd. Although he wasn't at the show, Drake caught wind of the monumental night from his OVO brethren who were in attendance and decided to upload two congratulatory Instagram posts. The first one was captioned, Starboy from the Sixth Side, Ano Gang, Big Up Safe for Selling Out Mod Club, Wish I Was There to See the Guy Shine. The second photo was captioned, Ginobili all summer like I said I would, rest in peace Ano. The pieces for a monumental career came together organically for Moji, who naturally motivated and hungry for more, would spend the remainder of the year. I was just thinking, bro, if Moji and, I mean, if um, Smoke Dog was alive and Moji and them was still around, bro, that would have been a crazy team right there. Moji and, and Smoke Dog making music right now? That would have been crazy. In and out of studios across the city, producing his debut EP. With the help so of So, question, around this time, um, was there beef between Driftwood and Regent? Like smoke, well, you know, smoke dog and presses camp at this time, or no, there wasn't no beef yet. Who reportedly helped fund the project? Our boy was released just ten days Not into really? the new year. It featured three songs, including the classic Wiggins, a tribute to the Toronto when Smoke Red Dog Golden died, State copy. Warriors, Small Forward. Also on the EP was a song called Mind Symphony, an anthem dedicated to his fallen friend Ano. Even with all that's begun to manifest for Moji, his life and his thoughts all seem to pivot on Ano, and more specifically on Ano's death. Moji didn't manifest any of this by being prayerful. He never thought Drake would co-sign him or that his best friend would die. All of the variables in Moji's life and career trajectory were out of his control. We've seen many rappers come before him, just as eccentric and dynamic. You see, like, every rapper I feel that's, like, significant, they always get that moment where a tragedy can either destroy them or define them. My point is, like, look what happened with 50 got shot nine times. That could have been the end of his career. But no, he took that moment and he rebuilt himself and he became a monster. You know what I'm saying? That moment when Ano died, that was supposed to be Moji's moment to, you know, go hard with the music. And I'm pretty sure that's what his boy would want for him to do. Like, Arno probably would want him to be successful for him. You get what I'm saying? It's just some people get the opportunity and drop the ball. You only get one shot, like Eminem said. These opportunities come once in a lifetime. Some people can make opportunities come more often. You get what I'm saying? If you fail at one thing, you could be successful at something else. But opportunities like that, yo, Drake co-signing you? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's big, bro. He should have actually, he should have made something from that moment. Made Memory, the most out of but it. But their stars tend to dim and fade out. Perhaps what sets Moji apart is all his grief, all his heart. A little over two weeks after releasing his debut EP, 
Moji would receive yet another shout out from the boy, but this time he was direct. Looking for revenge. Yeah, that was my 2016. shit too. Drake would name drop Moji on Summer 16, a single that was reported to be on his upcoming album, Views. The name drop was huge, mainly because the record debuted at number 6 on the US Billboard Hot 100, selling 215,000 downloads in its first week. These sales became the highest debut sales of Drake's career. For yeah. Moji at this point, Drake wasn't some elusive figure of Toronto, or the Sixth God, as some would refer to him as. Instead, he referred to Drake as a big brother. Two months after the release of Summer 16, Moji would talk in depth with MTV about Drake's impact on not just his career, but Toronto's music scene as a whole. How do you take 20,000 children in the middle of New York City without anybody seeing? Hey, yo. He fumbled for sure. That's my guy, you know what I'm saying? That's my nigga right there. That's my brother, you know what I'm saying? That's my big brother, you know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for Drake, you know what I'm saying? The city wouldn't be the same. Toronto wouldn't even have attention like that, you know what I'm saying? He put on for Canada. He gave his that USA passport. It's not easy, I mean, as a Canadian rapper, to be out there in America, you know, it's a big field, you know what I'm saying? It's not really easy, it's tough. He did it. Real he's talk. The, he's, he's the biggest rapper in the game right now, the best rapper in the game right now. Much respect, you know what I'm saying? He's a legend. That's my guy, you know what I'm saying? At this point, it would be safe to assume Drake and Moji. So what the hell happened? What went, what went wrong, bro? As it may seem, not even two weeks after the release of this interview, that brotherhood would come to an end. Wow, two weeks Have after the interview? Have you ever heard in the history of hip hop, a man that gives all his creativity and helps make billboard hits, but doesn't get paid a dollar for it, one credit for it, and you're stuck in the hood. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make sense, but exposing these will make sense. Song. Oliver's a snake ass, double headed snake ass, psychotic looking mo. Always stirring the pot, telling me, Rihanna wanted me at the music video shoot, but Drake didn't want me to come. All Drake's friends hate you, Drake doesn't like you. Always stirring the pot, you. Oliver is a shady ass white boy, culture vulture ass, snake ass, nerd, a dweeb, everything. Begs me to wear his clothing. I don't know, man. I feel like, like, was he high or something, bro? Like, what made him turn, like, what made him turn on Drake like that? It seemed like something happened, like, in, like, behind the scenes, and. I don't know, bro. Like, what more you wanted from Drake? I mean, he gave you a shout out, name dropped you in a song, did your dance. Like, you supposed to go off from there and do your own thing. Like, you know, some people, you know, they only get one hit too, man. He ain't dropped the bag to him. Oh, he wanted money. He probably felt like Drake owed him some bread. Cheyenne said he's unstable. I mean, looking at how he was moving lately and, you know, linking up with. With Regions Ops and dudes that diss Smoke Dog, you could say he was moving a little unstable. Advertise. That's why I used to wear his clothes. I thought we was family with OVO, but he never paid me a dollar. Oh, I yeah, he went. my way to trying to hide me from the world. He wanted money. This Oliver told me the whole OVO team thinks I deserve a compensation for everything Drake took from me. And all the Manchester offered me is $500. $500? Can't even pay mama's rent. What are you smoking <laughs> drugs, brother? You taking. You look like hey, yo. Fiend. In a series of since-deleted videos posted on Moji's Instagram account, he would call out Drake and his manager Oliver over unpaid contributions to Drake's upcoming album, View. I ain't gonna lie, though. It's kind of like, if I was in Drake's uh, position, no diddy. I ain't gonna hold you. I probably would have gave Moji like 100K. I would have gave him 100K. Like, yo, here, here's a little something, you know what I'm saying? I'll use your dance, name dropped you. You know what I'm saying? Because that shit goes a long way. You know, this dude's probably at this point still stuck in the hood. He's getting all this recognition. He's getting all this clout, but you ain't getting no money from the clout. At the end of the day, everybody's in this shit to make money, bro. At the end of the day, that's all that matters is trying to get money. Like, I don't give a fuck about clout. I'm trying to get paid, bro. So I can understand that, like, you know, you're getting all this attention, but you're not seeing no type of monetization from it. I would be, I would feel some type of way, but I would not did this shit though. He would later add more fuel to the fire. You keep shit like that. You hold it down. You keep it in the background. Drake uses ghostwriting. Private. But according to Moji, pinning hits is one thing, and being compensated for his work is another. In one of many. What hit did you write, bro? Moji shows a screenshot of a DM conversation between him and Drake, where Drake asks him for a voice recording to use on Views. Underneath it was captioned, "This is a title of a song on Views." After I did this shit, 
Oliver put me in the studio, and he said they need new hooks, new flows, and bars, and shit. I didn't want to be on these album because oh, I'm not a slave. Drake tried to put him in the sweatshop. Oliver, not the fake ass six <laughs> god. It only gets deeper. Stop Try to sign him to that sweatshop deal. Creature. These accusations are almost identical to the Quentin Miller mm. situation, who was not only outed as Drake's ghost writer, but had multiple reference tracks leaked. Mm. That's crazy. They put a Funk Master Flex drop on this shit. <laughs> Flex is dropping bombs to this shit, bro. <laughs> Yeah, you know Drake was, was stressing when they when this shit happened when they found out he had ghostwriters he was stressing off by saying he would have kept quiet if he was properly compensated Moji outing Drake and his team in such a manner was the wrong move for so many reasons not only was he burning bridges for himself and others but he became enemy number one to the wrong person you Facts. see leading up to this altercation Drake was already in hot water after being involved in a string of violent incidents it started in 2014 when two is this the Chris Brown uh Chris Brown bottle throwing incident? Two groupies on Instagram accused Drake of threatening them. One of the women stated Drake sent thugs from his entourage to her apartment and they threatened her for speaking out about having sex with him. While the other woman filed a police report stating Drake had threatened her for posting pictures of designer bags that he purchased for her. A few months after that, rapper and songwriter Quentin Miller was outed as Drake's ghostwriter, which turned into a bitter public dispute with Meek Mill, who called out Drake publicly Freak on Mill. According to Quentin Miller, Meek caught him at a Nike store in Beverly Hills shortly after the Twitter dispute and wanted confirmation about the ghostwriting allegations. When Meek didn't get the answers he wanted, he went on the attack. Later that same year, I ain't gonna hold you. Freak Mill was a sucker for that. Why are you taking your anger out on Quentin Miller? What the hell? Quentin Miller had to do with anything. It's like he picks and chooses who he wants to pop on. He did it with Safari, he did it with Quentin Miller. But when Nikki's boyfriend was pressing him by himself, he ain't want no issue. Detail A prominent music producer was offered the elusive gig as Drake's executive. I'll be honest with you, I can't even listen to no Meek no more, bro. I can't look at Meek the same, bro. And it's sad because I used to fuck with boy musically. The producer, known for creating hits like How to Love by Lil Wayne and Beyonce's Drunken Love, which earned him his first Grammy. It's easy to see why you would want this guy on your team. Damn, but in Beyonce? Order to work with a more diverse clientele, Detail declined the offer. Drake didn't handle the rejection well. According to TMZ, who first uncovered the incident, Drake allegedly invited Detail oh, to didn't detail, his home in Cali. Detail worked on, uh, didn't he work on Lollipop? Oh, that was, that was somebody else. He worked on Lollipop with Lil Wayne, and I think he passed away. So. To work on a new project after their monster collab on Nothing was the same. When Detail showed up at around 2 in the morning, he says it was the rapper's right-hand man, Chubbs, who greeted him instead. Chubbs ambushed Detail, and during the alleged beatdown, which Detail insisted was set up by Drake, Chubbs supposedly yelled, I will beat all your asses, including your bitches. I don't give a f I will hit you again. Do you think Drake is soft? Do you think Drake's a punk? Detail received a broken jaw and multiple other injuries that required surgery following the run-in. He says he was so badly hurt he couldn't work for a year. He hey. asked Drake repeatedly, and in vain, to cover his medical expenses. When Drake refused, the beaten producers sued two years after the incident, but the lawsuit was thrown out when Detail was arrested by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department and charged with five women and assaulting another. Hey, yo. He is currently being held on bail. If that is true, then he deserved that ass whipping. Tale of six point three million dollars. <laughs> That's crazy. Drake and the OVO goons weren't to be played with, but apparently Mo G didn't get the memo because not even a week after his initial posts went viral, he continued berating the rapper and his team on Instagram. This time, he took it a step further by leaking an unreleased song. Alright, just to let the world know, I never got paid no twelve grand. For the record, I'm not signed to OVO. And all my real fans that have been rocking me from day one, check the history. I always delete all my posts and I deleted it because I got bigger info coming to you right now. As we Too much talking these days. Hey, yo. These days. These days. I've been at work. Yeah. He leaked controller? No. He really leaked controller, bro? 
Nah, if he did that, bro, he a super villain, bro, for real. Man is a super villain. With the entire situation unraveling on social media for the world to see, Drake would reply to Moji with just a single Instagram post, simply captioned, The bright lights are supposed to inspire you, not fry your brain. This would be the only time Drake would acknowledge Moji. Mm. Well, publicly that is. After calling out Drake last week, Moji posted a picture suggesting he was the target of a violent assault. Dang, yo. Bro, they did that boy dirty. Multiple contusions. Broken no, like. Face all swole up. They did him dirt. And this was his mans that did this, right? You would have thought they was enemies. They treated him like a op. April 1st. 2016, a graphic photo of Mo G's swollen and bloodied face would be uploaded to his Instagram. It was captioned, when you speak from your heart, this is what happens, hashtag dirty society, hashtag dirty industry. The post went viral instantly, with numerous media outlets covering the situation, and with it being uploaded on April Fool's Day, many assumed it was a prank, but it wasn't. I was a badass whipping, bro. Across the border. The incident basically turned into a meme, with many influencers taking the opportunity to clown the bloodied rapper. Rapper turned podcaster J Not gonna hold you, he lucky he didn't die from those injuries, bro. When you get your face swole up and your brain, like, you could bleed, yo, that shit is bad. Halal Gang did that? That's why he turned on them, right? Joe Budden was one of them. He tweeted, I love that Moji with the dance moves line a lot more. Before I actually saw Moji, I ain't wanna move like Moji after that. As this was happening, people were speculating the OVO Defense League were directly involved in the brazen assault. Now, that may seem obvious to most, but within the streets of the Screwface capital, there were whispers suggesting Halal Gang orchestrated the attack. There are several points backing this claim. You know what's even more messed up about the situation if you think about it? He was pissed off at Drake because Drake didn't give him no money, but how much money did Drake give Halal Gang the back door emoji? The money that he should have gave to Moji, he gave it to his boys to backdoor him. That is sad, bro. He's like, nah, I'm not going to pay you no 12 bands. I'm going to give you, your friends the 12 bands so you could beat, beat them up for me. That's fucked up, bro. First, <laughs> That's some real evil shit, bro. Or OVO of jumping him. Second, Think about it. <laughs> before he was jumped. Moji unfollowed all Halal gang members and associates mm. on Instagram, and they reciprocated the energy. Moments later, Smoke Dog posted a photo of Halal gang linked up with OVO. Wow. The out of the picture was Moji. It was captioned, ain't shit change, but the weather, the real no, hashtag H gang. To further add fuel to the fire, Smoke Dog tweeted then deleted the following. Nick mm. need to stop begging for attention now. It's getting ridiculous, hashtag shaking my head. After mm. receiving backlash for the tweet, with some going as far as saying he was turning his back on his friend, Smoke Dog would attempt to clear the air by tweeting, LOL, Moji might, we ain't beefing, laughing emoji, stupid people. He followed this up by calling academics a slur after he posted a few videos covering the altercation. Now, this could have all been one big coincidence. My boy Regardless, academics caught a stray? Moji still wasn't phased. The day after revealing mm. he had been jumped, Moji would capitalize on the mass attention it garnered by dropping the music video for his hit song, Wiggins. I don't know about that one, gang. That's some bad promo. I ain't never heard taking an L, using an L as promotion for a track. Legendary track or not. You need to, like, go away for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Regroup. Come back when people forget. You just caught a bad ass whipping. You get what I'm saying? Like, how you get an ass whipping like that? Your face is all over social media. And then you want to drop a track. Nah, gang, it don't work like that. <laughs> I think I reacted to this, too. Had everyone talking, mm -hmm. But the first thing people noticed was Moji's face. It was unharmed, suggesting the video was initially recorded before his violent encounter with the OVO defense squad. Regardless, he was intent with the timing of its release, because towards the end of the video, it cuts to him laying down several pieces of OVO apparel on the mud beneath him. Ooh. He then douses the gear in gasoline and sets it aflame, marking the end of his affiliation. Now, you know what Moji should have did? He, did a he should have did a song with Freak Mill. 
He said, bro needs to eat though. I hear you. This should have been the time for him to do a video with, with Freak Mills. Uh. With Drake and OVO. Per usual, Drake refused to acknowledge the spectacle and would go on to release his record-breaking album, Views, on <laughs> April 29th. But something was off. A song was missing. Summer 16, the song Moji was name-dropped on, was pulled from the album last minute. An exact reason was never revealed, but I think we all can figure out why. The ordeal sparked a new dialogue surrounding Drake and his rise to stardom. Is he a culture vulture like Moji claims he is? Mm. First off, Drake's influence and impact on the city of Toronto cannot be over. I would say Drake is like a parasite, bro. He feeds off of other people to survive. And that's how he was able to last so long in the industry. Like every time a new rapper would come out, like a block boy JB, Drake do a song with him. The Migos came out, Versace, Versace, Versace. Future came out, he did the Tony Montana remix. Don't get, me, don't get it twisted. Them songs was bangers. But it's like Drake was able to take certain like energy off of these artists and like use it to keep him going and keep the interest going. You know what I'm saying? Like Drake's run has to be studied at some point. You know? But listen, I, I fuck, like I said, I fuck with boy musically. You don't got to like somebody as a person to like them musically. You know what I'm saying? I just, I don't like the new Drake. You know what I'm saying? I don't like the painting the nails and all that other little fucking such shit he been doing, but I still, you know, I fuck with some, I still fuck with his music. I ain't like for the dogs either though. There's a couple tracks I like, but it's like, how are you gonna name your album for the dogs and you give us some weak shit? You have Little Yachty executive pro Why the fuck are you going to Little Yachty for advice on what to do musically? You're Drake, bro. You, you determine what is hot. He was going to Little Yachty for advice. What the fuck? Nobody gives a fuck about Lil Yachty's opinion on music, bro. Like, who the hell listens to Lil Yachty? And you was getting advice from Lil Yachty on, on your album. I didn't get that. Overlooked. Throughout his career, he has acknowledged the different nuances of the city that raised him and the various people who identify within different regions of the city. For example, the Jamaican and Somali culture in Toronto is strong, and Drake has fire. He fired for that. To his widely accepted music. Know some Somalis that say we got it with Lahi. Arabic thing told me that I look like Yusuf, look like Hamza. Habibti, please. Ana Akid, Inte Oana Akhla. Try if you rush me off. Try if you brush me off. I see. Child support came with the receipts. <laughs> Open your window and he came with all the receipts of Drake being a vulture. <laughs> ready. On the other hand, many have made notes on the boy of some of Drake's most successful songs and collaborations. From grime to Afro beats to dance hall to drill, Drizzy has notoriously dabbled in multiple genres of music, but he only seems to incorporate elements of these genres when they are at the peak of their popularity. As the culture point. narrative started gaining traction, Howa Meyer, a scholar who studies Somali diaspora, claims that some Toronto artists' efforts to popularize traditional terms are a riff off of the orality and metaphoric ways of being and speaking. As for Drake specifically, Meyer states, Drake's cultural capital right now is coming from Somali kids, and he doesn't adequately compensate them for it. Thus, his authenticity comes into question. I'm saying, though, what does he need to compensate them for? Using terminology? I need to pay these people because I'm using certain words that they use? Like, who the hell, you know what I'm saying? Like, is there a monopoly on words now? Like, I have to pay people because I'm using... That's not why I call him a vulture. I think we all know why people consider him a vulture, but I don't think, you know, saying certain words like wallahi and talking like that, can, you know, is culture vultures for me. That's just the Toronto slang, right? 2016 was a year full of ups and downs for Moji, but despite everything, he would end the life-changing year off with one more classic. I don't rock with Munaf Kings. I'm selling rocks to the fiends. I keep a glass on with some mean, and my pockets stay fat in my diesel jeans. Akira Mode was released on October 26, 2016, two days after Drake's birthday, as a final dig at the rapper and his OVO namesake. The single is religiously worded, aimed at rebuking and castrating his critics and those who he once called friends. 
The term Akira refers to the afterlife or judgment day. By invoking the Akira, Moji is reminding his haters and comrades alike to stay honorable, loyal, and to not give in to the devil like that which turned many of those he once called family against him. He also references the term Moon Hafakins, an Arabic word whose literal meaning is hypocrite. In the context of the song, however, the term is being used to refer to backstabbers. I ain't gonna lie, I kind of feel bad for the boy. Your, your day one's turned on you for Drake? And you got the ass whipping? And you was out on the road to having some type of success in the music industry? You could have been somebody bigger than where you are now? I feel kind of bad for the boy. Sellouts. In a play of words, <clears throat> he is most likely aiming the diss towards his former crew, reminding them of the Akira and warning others about the Moon Half Akins. That shit hurts when your day ones, you know, betray you, bro. The career would begin to decline after the release of Akira Mode. That's like your really family. The nail in the coffin was when his sister unexpectedly passed away at the beginning of the new year. It was oh, widely shit. speculated she unalived herself, but this was never confirmed. Understandably, this took a toll on Moji. Yeah, that's added fuel to the fire now. Projects ...and remain inactive on all socials for nearly two years after her death. Fans soon began theorizing he had not only officially called it quits on the rap game, but severed ties with his Regent Park brothers. That narrative, however, was quickly shut down after pictures of them linked up in the UK for Drake's Boy Meets World Tour surfaced around spring of 2017. Then on what the hell? What's going on? Why the hell are they taking a picture on a Drake tour? After all the shit he been through. That's crazy. On December 9th, in collaboration with Puffy L's, Moji would make his return to the rap scene with the hit Black Rabba. Wait a minute, you went back to them dudes after they fucking betrayed you? Nah, gang. That's a no-no. Once y'all choose a side, y'all gotta stay on that side, bro. We ain't hopping over fences, hopping over gates, bro. That is wild to me. Pull up in the city, they like, whoa. Moji's back, drop the new track, they like, whoa. Spent 10 stacks on the kicks, they like, whoa. She say she like the way a nigga live, I'm like, whoa. That Batman had his fire, though. Baby girl, he gets I need that. The near two-year hiatus did wonders for Moji as he began taking the necessary steps to repair the bridges he once burned. But unlike Halal Gang... He said because he was close with Puffy. You know, I've spoken to Puffy before. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Puffy. He do show love. I actually fuck with him. You know, maybe Puffy wasn't involved in the beating. That's the only way we could make it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you wasn't there when I got my ass kicked and jumped, you know, if you ain't have nothing to do with that, then we could, you know, we could mend that relationship. But other than that, nah, I ain't... Some people weren't I'm as good to forgive. In this industry, I tell you, none of, none of these people, none of you guys, any of you guys in this industry, none of you guys tell the truth. That's the truth about the industry. Bottom line, I want to hear that, you know, like I'm banned from the building. Like, Jesus, we can't have you back. Yeah, I'm not really. That's all I know. He's banned from where? So even if I'm paying you for sessions. Oh, that came from Drake. Drake's like, yo, any, any studio that's. Hosting Moji recording sessions, y'all banned. Don't 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 allow him. I said I was harassing people. Is that what he said? Something like that. That's what that's what that's what he said. Yeah, something like that. I'm not sure. Internet without trackers. On May 16th, 2018, a near seven minute video of a recorded phone call between a local studio owner and Moji would be posted to his Instagram. Underneath it was captioned, Dear fans, I've been blackballed for the past two years now. I'm banned from 99.9% .9 of studios in Toronto. I'm banned from all clubs. I'm banned from doing shows and I'm banned from doing appearances. When I get lucky and find a studio, Engineers salt up my whole thing. They turn like the whole city turned against them, bro. Some hater shit. Damn. My word, they move like Joe Budden. They don't mix and master my music. They refuse to do it. All type of hate I get. Toronto is a city full of D writers and haters. My word on everything I love. And they wonder why I stopped rapping for two years. No opportunity. It's simple. By Instagram. It doesn't look like Moji kept his word about quitting. Because within the same week this call was posted, he would drop three songs. 
With the timing of the new music, the blackballed accusations looked like a promo stunt, and Toronto's underground scene didn't hesitate to share their displeasure. From bloggers to rappers to fans, Moji was bombarded with hate. The once adored rapper was now being exiled by the same community that initially embraced him with open arms, but all of this was quickly forgotten when just a month later, tragedy strikes. Smoke dog. Mm. Shit. With sirens blaring, an ambulance rushes through this crowded strip at the same time that a woman is pleading for one. Yo, did child support do a smoke dog video? I don't remember. She has just seen a body on the ground. The scene too graphic to show, but it was what so many people on Queen West saw with their own eyes yesterday after a triple shooting that killed two. The horrific video. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Region at this point. Media. They need an army of exorcists. They need the whole Vatican. They need the fucking every Muslim to go to region and just fucking cleanse that bitch, bro. Dog's unexpected death left an everlasting Put some fucking salt all the way around the block and just pray and, and remove all the demons from that block, Brody. But for Mo G, it was deeper than rap. In a series of Yo, Mafia, what up, bro? posts and stories, he would pour his heart out for his fallen friend telling Smokey he loved him and promising he would never perform their hit song. Savages from the Six was fired too with the documentaries. I don't know why he stopped. But yeah, child support took over for the Toronto documentaries right now. Again. But Moji, being the unpredictable man that he is, would be back to his 2016 ways not even a week after the passing of his friend. What? Making erratic posts on Instagram, even dissing Drake once again. What the fuck did this nigga talk about? A nigga like me? Nah, my son was on his Cam H shit. I don't own Tidal, I don't own Spotify, I don't own none of that shit. Nigga like me from the other... Son was literally one more bad day away from turning into the Toronto Joker, bro. Arthur Fleck. Somebody in the spot playing Drake's out. Why did the nigga say, I'll pop Molly's, my Molly's pop niggas. He's really tweaking. I'm the cream of the crop nigga. You niggas pop Molly's, my Molly's pop niggas. Huh, that was fire. What are you bro? Where these Molly's at that free popping niggas? I don't know what the hell this nigga be talking about. About his Molly Pops nigga. I never seen Drake with no Molly's. I think I'm the only Molly I seen him with before. That's the whole thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't hate him. I don't like him. I don't love him. But he wants to see us all against each other. His dreams to see us all get dusted. Youths from his end to get dusted. Because he wants to eliminate us. And he wants us to eliminate each other and put us all against each other. Instead of uplifting us and bringing us all together, he likes us to go against one another. So he I ain't gonna lie. He might be on to something where he said right there, bro. Them words seem so true right now. With the way Drake be moving, not really putting dudes on. He put dudes like Smiley on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, bro. It's like if dudes is too busy, like I think about it like this, right? If everybody's too busy beefing with each other, nobody's going to be able to reach to the, reach the top. Because we know Drake is at the top of that music industry in Toronto. He's at the top. And if everybody's so focused on each other, fighting each other down, bringing each other down, nobody's going to reach the top too. There won't be no competition for him. And he gets to sit alone. Nobody could challenge him for the throne. Get what I'm saying? He can eliminate us and get rid of the That's how I look at it. So he can keep himself a big throne, a delusional throne. So he can win. So he can it's not like, look, Eminem, what did Eminem do? He found 50 Cent. Somebody, like, whether you think he's a bigger rapper than M or not is irrelevant. 50 was a fucking megastar. Sold a lot of albums like M did. Jay-Z, who did Jay-Z found? Kanye. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see these artists that they find other artists and they put them in that position to win. So, why Drake? I think Drake tried to do it with Weekend, but Weekend wasn't trying to be under Drake because he was big enough to be on his own. It's like, why would I be under you and keep, keep you hot? You know, you're going to steal all my best shit. You're going to steal all my shit to make your shit last better. Nah, I'm good on my own. I'm just as big. You know what I'm saying? Even though lately, Weekend musically, I haven't really been interested. I think the first two albums Weekend did, I was interested. But he's been on some demonic, 
satanic shit to, for too much for me. And I'm already sick of that shit. Even Drake, Drake is down with that shit too, but it's not as blatant in your face. You get what I'm saying? But they all down with that shit. King on the storm. So guess what? I'm gonna always speak the truth regardless. And other artists that are as big as him, like Kanye West, Jay Z, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, legends that are bigger than been doing it before. Him, show us more love than him. Mm. That's the whole crazy thing about it. So I'm rocking with Kanye on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Of Four course you would. After these videos were posted, Moji would sit down for his first interview since 2016 and throw a few subliminal shots at his former friend. You know what I'm saying? And he said, then I hit him with the hotline. Chris Breezy with the dance moves. Moji with the dance moves. Av Boy with the dance moves. But slap my hood back on, but that was nothing but love, y'all. You know what I'm saying? But to speak about that record, I don't know if I should even speak about that record. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? But it's a good record though, you know what I'm saying? You feel me? But I'm not here to speak on next people's business or nothing, you know what I'm saying? Out of respect and out of love, you know what I'm saying? I kind of yeah. feel like even though Smoke, Smoke Dog might have been involved in beating his ass, I still feel like he still hurts. Because they knew each other since little kids, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they switch sides on you. I feel like you still have some type of love. You might not fuck with him no more, but you still got so, you know... At that point, maybe he still felt like he still had some love for Smoke Dog, but, you know, once the line's been crossed, I got to shit on you now, even though I don't want to. They're followers, you know what I'm saying? They're not leaders, you know what I'm saying? You feel me? They just follow what the trend is, you know what I'm saying? They don't know how to make their own trend, you know what I'm saying? And just start their own wave or whatever, you know what I'm saying? That's what everyone got to do in the industry. Everyone got to stop watching each other. Everyone got to start watching themselves and just do what they got to do to elevate themselves, you feel me? And to get through those obstacles, like, every day God's going to throw you obstacles. Life's a test, you know what I'm saying? You just got to, you know what I'm saying, pray. You know what oh, saying? he did mention that. Stay Copy. Stress, you know what I'm saying? You feel me? I think it's safe to say Moji wasn't a fan favorite in 2018, especially after videos of him surfaced, kicking it with Driftwood Court-based rapper, Pressa. The press is stupid. The link was highly controversial, <laughs> considering hey, the killer yeah. of Smoke Dog was Driftwood Court-based rapper 21 Neat. As stated before, after Smoke Dog's death, rivalries were formed. One of them was Regent Park and Driftwood Court. Driftwood affiliates even coined the term HGK, an abbreviation for Halal Gang Killer, and they didn't hesitate to scream it to the world. Hey yo, we don't live downtown, but we always DT. Always DT. We outside, we outside. You feel me? So when Pressa and Moji linked up, the narrative of Moji being a backstabber started to gain traction. Moji didn't respond to the critics though. Instead, he put his energy. It's funny how things work, right? He's labeled a backstabber when he chills with his ops, his man's ops. But when his man's switched side on him, it was you know, you know, beat his ass. Where was everybody saying that they were fouled for that? Did anybody ever say they was wrong for doing what they did to him? G into new music. It's a different ball game. Raptors, they just want a rent. On June 13th, 2019. Because look, we got to be fair, right? The Toronto Raptors won we gotta the call it how we see NBA it. title. The historic feat brought together a city like never before. It even inspired Moji to release new music. Ball Game, a song dedicated to the new NBA champions, was released on Canada Day, and it reached nearly 50k views in just under a week after its release, which isn't bad for someone like Moji, who rarely put out music. 2019 wasn't any different. You said OVO was their ticket out, but ain't nobody made it out. That's what I'm saying. Maybe if Smoke Dog was still around, something could have happened from that. But it was like they snaked their mans. Smoke Dog ends up dying, which people could look at. Maybe that was like some type of karma. Maybe that was some karma for the how they was moving. And then all that shit, you know? Everything escalated to where we at now today. Different, because the next time the scene would hear from him again would be on January 25th, 2021. But this time, it had nothing to do with music. Listen, brother. If anyone understands, I understand. You know what I'm saying? That's why, that's why I tell you I always have forgiveness in my heart for you. Because <clears throat> that shit's overwhelming, man. And it was a different time. You know, like you said, you were young.
And this shit can be confusing, man, when it's all just forwarding at you so fast. Like, Look at Drake gaslighting him, bro. You know, different people showing you love. You don't know if it's real. You don't know if it's fake. Then you have real friends telling you shit that maybe serves their own purpose or their own agenda. But it's like, I just want you to know, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I put that shit to rest a long time ago, man. Like I said, I only have love for you, brother. I wish the best for you always, you know? And I hope you know I mean that, man, for real. After nearly two years of inactivity, <laughs> Mo he, He's a great manipulator. <laughs> he gaslighting the boy. Listen, brother. He would return to Listen, Instagram brother. with a major announcement. He revealed a lengthy conversation between him and Drake, where they both put their pride to the side and hashed things out, officially ending their five-year beef. In one message, Drake writes, You have a good heart, I know that, some bumps along the way, but you're a blessed G. Moji replied, You're welcome, brother. I really appreciate that. I always remember what you did for me. You're a legend to me, fam. You know I have nothing but love for you. Sometimes in life we just have the wrong people around us. That shit is you crazy. Feel me? Drake responded with, Trust me, I never even had to forgive you in my heart because I loved you like a brother the whole time. We are connected for life through our city and through the guys. And just know, I always... There you go, Hoya. Drake was moving like a fucking sleazeball, bro. Ultimate slime, slimy sleazeball. The best for you. Man, you are a star hey, and yo. you had a light and that's what everyone saw in you. To see these two finally hash things out after five years was a beautiful thing to see, but the positivity for Moji was short-lived. A few months after these messages were released, we begin to get an idea for of real, who bro? the people he was referring to just might be. April 11th, 2022, Moji would go live on Instagram with mm. a lot to get off his chest. He started the stream off by shouting out people you would least expect. From the Wasses, Better not be lacking a caravan of woo, to top five. Flip up. He is deep in. You guys are not ready for this shit. You know what I'm saying? Moji was showing love to people who at one point didn't hesitate to diss his loved ones. He also seemingly mocked Mustafa the poet by singing along to one of his songs. I'm going God. I'm going God. I'm going God. I'm going God. That's hilarious. As viewers began spamming the comments pointing out what everyone was Stay thinking, alive. Regent Park Stay Rabbi alive. Tyke, Tyke, who at the time was incarcerated, would join the live stream to set some things straight. He started off by giving Moji his flowers, but towards the end of his rare appearance, Tyke confronted Moji for tarnishing his reputation during his beef with Drake. Moji been through his ups and downs. Sometimes he listens, sometimes he don't, sometimes he's hard headed, sometimes he's ignorant, sometimes he's all types of shit. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the love was always there and the respect was always there. So, you know, this nigga always showed me love and shit like that. So, I don't know what it is. Yo, I told you already, you disappointed me in a couple of certain situations and shit, you know? I told you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I told yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I told you you let me down and shit. You made yeah. me look bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, with that one situation, I know what you're talking about. But, but, mm -hmm. like, but my boy's people, right? With the boy, you know, you don't gotta come. Yeah, yeah, With the yeah, boy, you know. Sound like they talking about some let, federal let shit right you, there, bro. You, you made me look up because I put my life, yeah. I put my name on the line for you, brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what the fuck is he talking about? What happened? Fuck with you like that. Weekend, you know what I'm saying? Fuck. Okay, thank you. Thank you. you know I can appreciate yeah, it, but I used to keep it real. You everything, you know what I'm saying? I go, can, yeah. can you let the world know that, please? Let the yeah, world know. Yeah, I let the world know that. I let, I let, I let Chubbs know that in periods of that, yo. You know what I'm saying? My nigga got cheese coming from so the f*** you doing, fam? I fully just squashed it. Alright. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, know, you made me look like a deep. fool, man. <laughs> you made me look stupid. Go get into it if you want to. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Alright, cool. Shout out, shout out to Chubbs, though. Shout out to, to p Ren. Shout out to all those you know, shit like that. You feel me? I could only do so much. <laughs> I, I tried. Thing, I tried, you know? Yeah. I had a little bipolar moment. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had a little bipolar moment. Like you know me? I don't trust people like that. You know what I'm saying? But Listen, bro. If I'm ever tweaking, right? If I ever get in some shit, I'm going to be like, look, guys, uh, you know, I'm a little bipolar, right? I could get out of a situation, bro. 
That's my get out of a situation card right there. That's my get out of jail free card. Anything ever go wrong? I'm bipolar. I do what I do. Going Fuck that. I'm standing on business. If I did it, if I said it, it's because I meant it. And I'm not sorry about it. Facts. And I put all them niggas on. Long story short, that's how we just don't keep it. And I still wish them the best. As the near one hour stream was coming to an end, Tyke would address certain people who he felt were destroying Regent Park's legacy. Mm. One of them was Puffy L's. Oh, I remember this. You should stop rapping, dude. Like, <sighs> not even this has nothing to do with any street shit, no hood shit. Like, this is like, yo, he just sucked <laughs> in the rap. Like, but yo, Puffy, Puffy's in the see this shit. Stop rapping, my nigga. You're trash, dude. You make the hood look bad, my nigga. <laughs> And a real legendary block with real legendary step and it's like you're the who mm. people are talking about it's like it's, it's sad you know so just just fall back man. get your money take care of your family mm. why you don't like why you don't like puffy bro <laughs> <laughs> The comments yeah. made by the two Parkers didn't sit well for some people because four days after the live stream aired, Moji's family home would be targeted in a drive-by shooting on back-to-back -back nights. It's crazy. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Now, this was the last straw for Moji. For weeks preceding the shooting, he would go on an Instagram live tirade to publicly denounce his affiliations with Halal Gang, with him even screaming HGK at one point. Mm. HGK till I die, are you crazy? Put your kids on. I, I don't like that. Dudes be shooting people's houses and shit, bro. Like, you got innocent people that live there. Old ladies, mothers, kids. Like, why the fuck would you just shoot a house there? You don't know who you can hit. So I would feel some real type of way, bro. Real talk. Like, I, I hate people that do that shit. If you're going to shoot, man, go after the person you're trying to go after. He also took shots at all Regent Park rappers for not making Toronto's Rolling Loud lineup, which was set to take place in September. That's, That's crazy. For six years, you guys are not even on Rolling Loud. About to cry. You kids didn't make it to Rolling Loud. That's sad. Mm. And and from the woods made it to Rolling Loud. Some of the towns made it to Rolling Loud. From all ends of the city made it to Rolling Loud. You guys didn't even make it to Rolling Loud. That yeah, nah, that's crazy. You guys are quit rapping. Stop rapping. Giving you guys all the sauce. You just had no drip, never did. Mo, we're doing a show. We need you, fam. We need you out here, fam. Fam, fam, we need you, fam. <laughs> oh, the good old days. Yo, Moji, fam, we need you at the show, fam. Man, we need you here, fam. We need the Janobi, fam. The fans want to see you, fam. <laughs> <laughs> Puffy, what? I had to bench Puffy here, yeah, hopes. The traders. Up for 10 bands for 10 bands 10 bands for 10 bands and then your whole career is fell off you kids hide you goody got touched to you hiding all i guess pisses me off don't make me pack the kids bro oh you still f with off. the real region copy my nose shut up okay you guys wiped play around kids play around this summer come outside I want all you guys to come outside. I drop location right now for all you guys. Come outside. Come outside. This whole summer you guys gonna wipe. That's gonna get wiped. This was the side of my I don't like when dudes make threats on the internet, man. I feel like more often than not, when people make threats on the internet, it never ends up well for them, bro. You get what I'm saying? Like you make first of all, cops is taking notes. So if something happens, they're going to be like, oh, this guy said he was going to do this to this person. You get what I'm saying? But then at the end of the day, it's like, listen, bro, 40, um, 48 Laws of Power, Art of War. You're not going to know my mood. Like, yo, if I don't like you, you're not even going to know I don't like you. Get what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm real sneaky like that. And that's to, like, real enemies. I'm not, like, if you're just a little bitch nigga, like, I don't like, you're going to know I don't like you. But if it's, like, some real serious shit. You're not going to know nothing unless it's time to move, bro. What did Lil Wayne said? Real G's moving in silence like lasagna, bro. You're like, you're not going to. All right, whatever. You got it, fam. You know what I'm saying? You might win this little altercation or you might talk shit. But when I catch you. <sighs> Moji, the scene has never seen before. Thank God I'm not even on that time. Like, I'm not on some street shit like that no more. But 
Moji dropped a diss track targeting Mustafa. I still be moving like Puffy Batman out here. From claiming Mustafa used Smoke Dog's death for personal gain to calling Puffy L's a washed up basketball player, Moji didn't hold back in the slightest. Moji with the dead move, no bleed with the dead move. Regen 98, born on the finish in 96, moved to Regen 98. Ben had to block. I seen this. Mo, you G, when you gonna run up the closet? Put you on Nas one mic and you lost them. We all know you didn't bring your smoke to the Junos. He lucky Joe Easy wasn't out there. After making money off uh, Smoke Dodge's death, you ashamed, you were lame. What comes next? Hmm. Every since you go to his family, you suspect. Waited for old niggas to die to make records like stay alive. Cause when Arnold was alive, you was never allowed. I hmm. don't like ugly, you more of a child, so foul. And I thought My you son with the acapella? Our boy left. The truth is, you're a disgusting, despicable kid. Smile and laugh on our Weezy. He would have ran into Joe Weezy. It would have been crazy. Celebrated that the black Muslim brothers, Uncle Tom ass nigga with no color. Puffy, don't call yourself a top Mali when we all know you can't speak Somali. Real lines fought and died for the country. You six eight monkey fell basketball junkie. Your real name stutter. You hey, never yo. You got issues. You're suffering tissue. Acting hard body, but I ain't gonna hold you. He dropping some bars right there. He said, how you call yourself a top Molly? You can't even speak Somali. Pause. I don't care. <laughs> he would have ran him down. Yo. Yo, Joe Easy's the boogeyman of region, bro. The boogeyman. Yo, child support. Your next video, we all know, is going to be Joe Easy. It has to be titled Joe Easy, the boogeyman of region. Gang got the green light to finally respond to Moji. It began with Mustafa the poet posting this message to his Instagram story. LOL, there's not one you mentioned in this video who rocks with you. You've only ever been a burden to this hood. All the lawyer fees, funeral costs, community programming. Where were you when we were covering that? You're nothing but a mascot and you- Covering that with what? The 10 bands that Drake gave you? Need to seek medical attention. Linking up with these exhausted ops who've only ridiculed our dead. All for what? A crumb of clout. You're as desperate as they are. He further added, Moji. I don't think it was about clout at that point. At that point, it was personal. You know what I'm saying? Y'all snaked me. Y'all treated me like shit. Y'all did me dirty. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been blackballed. It wasn't for clout. I don't want anyone <clears throat> to get touched over this. So Shot my crib up. Let's settle this like real n Fight me. I'll knock you out in the cage court like I used to back in the days. We can invite the whole city. You'll have the stage you desperately want. So I'm talking spicy. Waste any time responding to Mustafa. In a video which appears to be recorded at Regent Park's cage court, not only did he accept the challenge to fight, but Moji also took the opportunity to air out even more of Mustafa's dirty laundry. Mm. You gotta lie to the public like that. I'm in the cage court right now. Challenge accepted. I'm in my hood at any time I want. I walk dole. I walk with just me and Allah. You can't do that. <laughs> I now, walk with just me and a lot. Another thing is, you act like you paid for any funeral services. You never pay for no funeral services in your life. You know the messages paid for. You know their families paid for. All these individuals that died from our community, their families has paid for. Don't do despicable acts and act like you paid for things and programmings and lawyer fees. If you had something to pay I for, believe you would have paid for it because they look like bums on the Juno stage. You know, you and I know they look like bums on the Juno stage. Even you look like a bum. You wear white Air Forces. You're so desk. <laughs> look at me, look, look how fly I stay. You guys never had the sauce like me. And let's not talk about clout. I'm not doing none of this for clout because I was the first in the hood with clout. You know that. Ooh, bars right there. I ain't doing this for clout. I was the first one in the hood with clout. You know I like that. And you wasn't allowed to hang. If Smoke thought was your friend, how come you ain't in trap house doing numbers? <laughs> you ain't still by the robber. You were only in Safe's video field because Safe was the only friend that actually liked you and let you hang with him. So you should thank the man, if anything. You know what hey. I mean? You despicable kid. And please. Despicable. Yo, I'm using that from now on. You're despicable, fam. Let me tell you something. The truth hurts, it doesn't. Despicable. You know what I'm Challenge accepted. I'm in the cage court right now, live. These kids are not outside. I'll make that clear again. These kids are not outside. Do not let them fool you. And when you guys became the face of the hood, you guys let the hood go to tarnish, to waste, garbage. Back mm. in the days to say you're from Regent Park was an honorable thing. Now you say you're from Regent Park, people want to step on you like Mustafa the poet. You see what I'm trying to say? Damn. Like, come on. Damn. You guys are not but snakes and musk and goofs. Damn. And you're the biggest mascot. I feel, bro, everything he's saying is like poison in them fucking words, bro. And I believe him. 
Yeah, he was ready, bro. I was just about to say that. You know, he got the little fanny pack. He got the shit on him. And he's live. And he talking and shit. Nah, that's a W for him, bro. He gets a dub for that. And Arnold did beat you up. And I had the facts. And there's a lot more where that came from. A lot is going to come on. Keep playing around. Keep playing around like you. He ain't even stutter. He ain't even stutter, y'all. None of you had this drip or that ass. None of you niggas have a brave heart like me. You guys are awesome. Frauds. You know that. And I know that. And I'm in. And it's 3 p.m. And I'm in. 3 p.m. Live. In the middle of the basketball court, nah, son, that's a W right there. I don't see no one here. Come on, the truth hurts, in the right? in the middle of the and basketball court, exhausted. three p.m. You guys, yo, look, isn't that one of the isn't that Joe Easy crib right there, bro? That looked like one of those apartments, bro. Now, no joking, shit. That did ass look like the apartments when I was seeing the video and shit. Some was right across the street from Joe Easy, bro. Nah, he lucky, bro. He lucky, bro. He dodged the bullet with this one, yo. That ass. Stay alive, stay alive, stay alive. Someone was literally across the street from the yeah, boogeyman. And stop making songs about dead people. You know what I'm saying? Benefiting off the dead. Because mm. you never pay for mm. nothing. Pay for their fucking families to move out the hood, kid. Oh, oh okay. In the, the south side. <laughs> Mustafa with DMOG on That's Instagram crazy. saying, I'm traveling for the next few weeks because I actually have a career you bum ass. I'm good to fight on the 22nd or 23rd in Toronto. Mustafa was trying to set up cage matches. Make sure you take your meds next week. As the mm. fight date got closer, Moji would post a number of videos of him mock training for the big event, mm. even going as far as taping a picture of Mustafa on a punching bag. <laughs> I ain't go live. He would have dropped the diss track after this because he has so much funny ass promotion. That shit probably would have did some numbers. You feel me? Like all these little antics he did, it should have culminated in some music, bro. Should have dropped drop a di I, I know he did the song with a uh, Boulevard though, but I mean like another track, just him by himself going at them. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, they actually threw hands. I got money on Moji, bro. Moji's gonna win that one. <laughs> And he playing the 70 music in the background. Facts. I ain't gonna lie. Moji is just as good as top five with the antics. He's entertaining with the funny shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think so. <laughs> so I'm stepping on his pictures. You look like a fucking walking death symbol. Y'all see, he stayed with the fanny pack. He was not lacking. He stayed with that fanny pack. You are irrelevant, bitch. You look like a fucking death symbol. You look like a real death symbol. You belong in the sewage for your despicable act. Don't ever call a real nigga out like Moji and say you wanna fight. Puffy, you better watch yourself, you know. You, listen, don't ever act like you wanna fight and you wanna fight. Well, you belong because I can't make this call. Sewage. <laughs> and I'm in peel right now. Hey, yo. Sewage. sewage. Fuck it, you belong in the sewage, you fucking sewer rat. <laughs> don't ever call a real nigga out. You sewer rat. Hey, yo. Come on, man. I'll sew in. in. I look better than you, poor man. Yo, listen, poor man. You would never win this one in your life. You see, you would have got this if you fought, but you're scared to fight. You know what I'm saying? But you would never win this one in your life. You despicable kid. Puffy Oz, you never got lag like this in your life. You think I care about rap? Forget racks, you fucking goof kids. Come outside and play the fucking block. You kids do not play the fucking block. That's Regent? on the app right where I grew up, goof kids. That's Regent? Bitch ass niggas. Get your lag up, get your funds up. Fucking nice mm. Unfortunately, the highly anticipated fight would be called off by Puffy Ells, who would go on to say, No one's fighting no one because I said so. Pray for the delusional cap dancer. I've been trying to get. Yeah, I was just about, it looked like the same apartments that, you know, Joe Easy, where you from, type shit. Since preschool. 
also been saving him since now every time i see those apartments i already gonna think that shit like that's dan joe easy lived there one of those apartments or some late shit. 90s was cool with lil homie 2016 to 2018 2019 i ain't want to be his friend no more so he went and made new ones make sure them boys renew his medical prescription the battle between the Parkers continued into the next month, and on the anniversary of Smoke Dog's death, things were no different. It began with Moji appearing on a live stream featuring Boulevard Biz, who had previously made songs dissing the late rapper. Yeah, that was a that's a classic tune right there, bro. My son a hundred crashed out too, bro. Hundred has some fire. During the live, the two would preview a new song, a remix of Still by the Rabba. The track shipped Toronto's underground scene to its core because the street anthem was remixed into a diss track aimed at Halal Gang. On the song were also a few bars targeting Smoke Dog, which didn't win many fans over. He ain't making past the medics, man. He really need a doctor. Ten shots to his face to do him proper. Skinny L's Moji, I'm a problem. Wick Woods, nigga, I'm a part. Grrr. 21 shots for your partner. HCK, bitch, that's the Rasta. Young guy, Molly's and some Rastas. <laughs> Call bro, bitch, young, go quick. I had to make region great. I, I ain't even peeped the hat, gang. <laughs> <laughs> Moji's halal gang smear Big campaign would come again. to an end as both sides That's hilarious. Stop acknowledging each other soon after this live stream aired. By the end of the year, Mustafa would go <clears> on <throat> to interview UFC champion Khabib, while Puffy Ells would come out of musical retirement and drop a track featuring Safe. Moji, on the other hand, would go ghost once again. No more updates, music, or even Instagram live streams. The smear campaign would be the last time the scene would hear from him. As unpopular of an opinion this may seem, Moji not only paved the way for himself and those close to him, but for aspiring artists all over the city. Being raised on a block that only knew struggle, Moji wasn't born with the tools to become a star. After all, he dropped out of school at just 10 years old. He had no choice but to make do with what he had, and that gritty realism was projected in his music. A tale full of ups and downs, Moji's story is one for the books. How do I do it all? With a little help. And to support my family's immune health, I choose Airborne. Damn, that's it? Alright, that was a good one. I love, damn, we, this, this shit turned out being an hour and a half live stream, bro. And the video was only an hour, but yeah, nah, this was a good one, man. Again, to me, man, I just I feel, I feel bad. And I just feel bad about that whole situation, bro. You know, it always sucks when your day ones just, like, turn on you and you know what I'm saying? Like, I hate to see stories like that, but it happens. It happens. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I appreciate everybody that was tapped in, man. Everybody that was commenting. We got to do this shit more consistently. You know, we got to... I'm going to try to do some more streams on this channel. I'm going to try to do it for Friday. Next, Every Friday, we'll do, like, a stream like this. We could do, like, a reaction to some documentaries. You can ask me a question. Appreciate your, your JJ. Thank you, brother. Yeah, you know, I'll try to do this every Friday. And if we're going to do some music reactions, I'll tell y'all go on my Twitch because I don't want to play no music on YouTube and they block the stream and all this other shit. Throwback reactions. All right. Like what? Throwback Toronto joints? So if I do, like, I'm trying to, I created a recording schedule for myself, right? And I was trying to stick to it. And then I started working at a new job overnight. So I had to, like redo the schedule to fit it in to work with my my work schedule so now that i've figured that out i'm gonna try to be consistent this week coming up so tomorrow we got some international music reactions on uh, monday we got uh music reactions so let me know in the comments who you want to see like let me know i'm taking a request right now monday a couple toronto artists let me know people been asking me to check out that crippled joint so i may do that reaction you know what I'm saying any Toronto artist you want me to check out, let me know for Monday. All right, I'm about to go. I don't know if I'm gonna stream some Final Fantasy 7. I just copped this shit. I don't know if I'm gonna do a let's play or I might stream this on the gaming channel. So if y'all want to pull up there, you know, pull up. I'm about to be streaming that. I just copped the new fucking the $200 controller from the PS5. 
Straight cash, copy. Lil Beretti, copy. I got you. So I'm going to do those three. Straight cash dropped like two joints, right? So I'll probably do two, a two for one. Now I haven't checked that out yet, so I'll do that Monday. So Monday, I'm going to do a little bit of everything. We're going to do some mainstream. I'll do some New York shit, UK. And I'm going to do some, uh, some Toronto stuff. Tomorrow is going to be my international day. I do like K-pop or some funny shit like that or some Brazilian because those really good numbers. I'm saying, yeah, we, we about to be on our shit, man. We about to be at 40 fucking thousand subscribers. I think by next week, we're going to hit that shit. So, you know, it's all about being consistent. You've got a plan. You got to stick to it. Again, man, I love y'all, bro. I appreciate everybody, bro. I want to do this shit again, man. It's fun to interact with y'all, man. I've been needing to do this shit. And that's why we probably haven't been growing as much because I haven't been streaming on this channel. But yeah, man, if you guys want to, you know, continue, pull up to my gaming channel. I'm about to be streaming on there for a little bit. I haven't even played. I haven't even opened this shit up yet. I'm lying. I did. So I could download it. But yeah, yeah I'm going to holler at y'all. Again, let me know the request. Leave it in the comments, all right? I'm going to see y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all.